Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So first up today, Biden is set to meet with Jerome Powell later today to talk about the current state of the US economy and of course, inflation. This is not usual, however, as remember, the Fed is supposed to be totally independent of the government influence. And don't forget, this is a global issue as we just learned that inflation in the Eurozone is also sitting at the highest level on record, sitting at 8.1% year over year. Looking back the last 20 years, this is clearly the highest reading. And the European Central Bank has said that this era of negative rates could be over as soon as September. We get some encouraging news on the EV front in Canada from IHS Market. They say a ZEV, which is both battery electric and plug-in hybrid, accounted for one out of every 12 new vehicles registered in Canada in quarter one of this year. Additionally, the market share of battery electric vehicles increased to 6.2%, with volume increasing by 52% year over year. And this chart is data for the last four Q1. So as you can see, 19, 20, 21, the growth of full BEVs was relatively slow. However, this year we saw a significant jump up to 6.2%. And also importantly, as you can see, ICE vehicles steadily declining each Q1 over the last four years. Goldman Sachs is sticking its neck out a little bit with this one, saying that over the next two years, the cost of certain key metals for batteries is actually going to come down, not go up as almost everybody else has been predicting. Their analysts said, despite this exponential demand profile, we see the battery metals bull market as over for now. So what's their reasoning? They said a surge in investor capital into supply investment tied to this long-term EV demand story has generated an outsized supply response well ahead of what they expect the demand trend will be. They then said there will be a sharp correction in lithium prices that have averaged around $54,000 a ton this year. That should drop down to $16,000 per ton sometime in 2023. But don't get too excited as they also said prices could soar again after 2024 and that in the second half of this decade, the demand surge will then more sustainably overcome the current supply growth. You guys may have seen Goodyear testing some of its airless tires on a Model 3 over the past week. I just wanna say, remember, these tires have been in testing for almost two decades now. Of course, I would love to see this as tires that don't need inflated and require a lot less maintenance would be an awesome thing, and they could potentially make EVs even more efficient. However, there are still regulations that would need to change. I know that Japan, they're still illegal on the road, and there are companies trying to work on getting these airless tires on things like golf carts and other non-public road vehicles. So definitely some encouraging things going on, but it feels like they're still at least a few years away. But let me know, what do you guys think if you've been following this closely? Matt from Good Soil Investments brought up a great point over the weekend that Tesla is receiving back some of its leased Model 3 vehicles that started back in 2019. And since Tesla owns these vehicles and the robo-taxi fleet may still be a few years away, they could now resell these vehicles on the open market. Now, we're not gonna get into the numbers as you could debate the fair market value of a 2019 Model 3. Matt had 60,000, maybe it's 45, 50,000. Either way though, this theme still holds that Tesla will now have these vehicles that they can sell, potentially serving as a new way to boost margins for Tesla. It's being reported that Giga Shanghai might be back to 70% of the output levels before the lockdown. Pre-lockdown, they were doing around, let's say 16,000 vehicles per week, so they could be back to the neighborhood of 11 to 12,000 per week right now. And remember, Giga Shanghai did add a second shift last week, and we just learned this. The Shanghai government just announced the city's two-month lockdown will be fully lifted. Midnight tomorrow is now later tonight. This includes full resumption of public transport and all restrictions around leaving home and other movement being lifted. If you translate that image, you can see normal production will resume in an orderly manner. Public transportation will resume operations and motor vehicles will resume traffic. So that's of course great news as hopefully over the course of the next few weeks, most of the suppliers for these auto manufacturers will be back up and running, producing at least close to full capacity. However, just keep in mind that at least VW and Tesla are looking to keep their employees in the closed loop system until June 10th. Why? Well, the company wants to have a 10 day buffer to ensure production stability. As mentioned, VW is doing the same thing until June 10th and VW will gradually step up to full production between the 13th and the 30th. 
This article was pretty interesting talking about how one component is basically going to help shift the move toward EVs. It's a very underappreciated element of the vehicle, but also very important and one in which yet again, Tesla has an edge. And yes, we're talking about the wire harness that's used to bundle cables together. And some are predicting this could hasten the downfall of combustion cars, mainly due to the supply issues stemming from the war in Ukraine. According to interviews with more than a dozen industry players, this supply crunch could accelerate the plans of some legacy auto firms to switch to a new generation of lighter, machine-made harnesses designed for EVs. And an industry analyst said, this is just one more rationale for the industry to make the transition to electric quicker. And the CEO of Bentley said the Tesla model, which is a completely different concept of wiring, we could not change to that overnight. It's a fundamental change in the way that we design cars. And our guy Sandy Monroe said, I wouldn't put a penny into internal combustion engines right now. And he predicted EVs will make up half of global new car sales by 2028. And don't forget this image from the Cyber Rodeo showcasing the Model Y's wiring system far fewer parts, much lighter, much easier to manufacture, and now Legacy Auto struggling to get these wire harnesses will hopefully continue to move the industry towards EVs faster. There was a Wall Street Journal opinion piece going around saying that each Tesla car used around 130 pounds of lithium. However, that's false. If you go back to the Q1 call, Drew said, yeah, we're looking at around five kilograms per car, which is equivalent to around 11 pounds, not 130. So Elon has been tweeting a lot over the weekend. I just wanna highlight a few of them. He said, yeah, the public has no idea how much Tesla and SpaceX have been attacked and undermined because they aren't unionized, but they offer the highest pay in the industry. And this administration would rather the company be dead than not unionized. He was then asked if we could have the ability to have the windows close automatically if the Tesla detects rain and the windows are open while parked to which Elon said, sure. And it's not exactly the same, but already in your Tesla, if you go to locks, you can put on the walk away door lock to automatically lock doors when you walk away from your car. And you can also be notified if you leave open any doors or windows. And lastly, you can already close windows on lock. Elon reaffirmed his responsibility to the highest good for consciousness while always re-examining what the highest good is. And honestly, I believe him. And he said, few seem to realize China is leading the world in renewable energy generation and EVs. Whatever you may think of China, this is simply a fact. And I'll play the clip from James in a second, but Elon said, our video clips are usually shorter than 30 seconds, but the overall point that James makes is accurate. Tesla is probably labeling more images per week than any other project ever done, and our rate of labeling is increasing rapidly. One of the things I wanted to highlight on this is they added 180,000 video clips clips so you know a clip it, yeah. it's 288 frames per second eight cameras at 36 frames a second right so these are high def uh 1280 by 960 frames so you know sizable so we've heard different uh estimates of how long the clips are you know up to 60 seconds or whatnot but if they're 30 second clips that's 1.5 billion images so to incrementally adjust this one this one feature, this is just one of many, many features. They added a training set that's probably bigger than all, than every single labeled vision training set that has ever been compiled, like maybe a hundred times bigger. Like, it, like a million images is considered a really big labeled training set, a huge labeled training set. And they're just doing an incremental adjustment to a feature and they're adding up 1.5 billion <laughs> images to it. Like I love, it's just, the scale yeah. is nuts. <laughs> he was asked, was Trump usually relatively supportive of your endeavors? He said, yeah, although I hesitate to admit that because there are a lot of people that foam at the mouth if you even mention his name. The Wall Street Journal did an article on Tesla and India not being able to come to a deal. Nothing really that we haven't already talked about. I just wanted to highlight this chart that explains things pretty clearly. EV car sales by year in India, the high water mark in 2021 was still only 14,880 EVs. And further than that, the average price of cars sold in India is about $12,000, according to data from Jado Dynamics. Listen to this, GM is apparently applying for a patent for an EV with two 
charge ports. Now, yes, many of these patents never make it to the light of production. However, just something to pass along to see what develops with this. Over the weekend, there was another battery fire from Rivian's plant in Normal, Illinois. Nobody was hurt and the pack was just being tested. However, at this point, we do not yet know the cause of the fire. And I believe this is the third time that firefighters have been called to the plant since the fall. We got an awesome new interview with Drew Baglino and some folks from Stanford. I do encourage watching the whole video, but I will give you my main takeaways. Full video will be linked below. Biggest takeaway for me, it was just a great reminder of how much talent there is at Tesla, and I'm talking non-Elon talent. So many bright and incredibly talented people working at this company. And as much as I love hearing from Elon, I think it would be awesome to hear Drew and some of these other leaders get more one-on-one -on -one type interviews. Drew said, it seems likely that peak oil is near, not because we will run out of it, but because there's now a better alternative. Eventually, he said this should be true of gas too. Electric can be better, but there's still a lot of work to do. When it comes to scaling, Drew said, we're now at the exponential growth curve where it becomes painful. We need annual battery production globally of around 15 to 20 terawatt hours per year, and we're barely at one terawatt hour now. He said a lot of the earth needs to be moved to get these resources for the batteries, and we now need to invest in a dedicated battery supply chain. Nothing before has been deliberately built for the battery supply chain, but the good news, now that's changing. He reiterated that the bottleneck is raw materials, and the biggest risk is lithium. We need better extraction methods. There is a lot of work on sodium being done in academia and we could use this for the grid. He said once we get to around 300 terawatt hours of battery capacity built, we can also get to 95% recycling efficacy. This will be orders of magnitude lower cost when this happens. Drew said the last lithium mine to come online in Nevada took 10 years, and this is the main issue. The resource extraction timelines are extended in most of the developed world. The factories are the easy part. It's the mining and refining that needs to be accelerated. And lastly, he was asked about the battery swap that NEO does, and he said on a pure profit and loss basis, this did not make sense. Tesla runs its supercharging business as a standalone business to analyze the financials, and you want to do the bare minimum to make this service possible. He said battery swaps are not the best way to provide this service. This was last week, but Elon was asked if we could get AirPlay added to Tesla's as it adds the ability for lossless streaming. And yes, this is indeed different than CarPlay, not the same thing. Elon said, we'll discuss this and other improvements with Tesla Audio Engineering. And the word is Tesla would need new New special hardware to ever allow CarPlay in the vehicle, so I personally would not be holding my breath for that feature anytime soon. Just a rumor, but Samsung SDI might be working on 46, not 80s, but 4640s or 4660s, basically 4680s that are shorter. Presumably this would be for non-Tesla companies because I would think Tesla wants to stick to the 4680s to streamline manufacturing, but something to watch. We got a little bit more information on the DeLorean Alpha 5 EV. Probably won't be manufactured for a few years. When that time comes, it's supposed to be made in Italy. We don't have an official price, but word on the street is around $175,000. And what might that money get you? Well, here are the specs, zero to 60 in just under three seconds and range of over 300 miles. But as I said, take these with a grain of salt. We'll wait and see if and when production happens, what the production numbers actually are. And sure, the car looks cool, but after watching this industry closely for the last almost three years, I'm personally putting close to zero stock in these prototypes and announcements and reveals. Call me when you start production and then maybe we'll pay a little bit more attention. And lastly, Eja Group posted a new video of the assembly of the 9,000 ton gigapress that might be used for the Cybertruck in the future. So I'll show you a quick clip. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.